<laughs> with great respect, I, I might observe, and this is partly a Western thing as well as an American thing, but there are, and I'm, I don't mean to be offensive at all, because I'm very fond of this country, um, but there are very specific cultural problems in this country which are not found necessarily in that form elsewhere. You're talking about sort of the religious attack on science. As the gentleman was mm -hmm. indicating. Uh, but also with respect, I would suggest that those cultural problems are not so much the supremacists of some scientists, which I find frankly deplorable, um, because you know, understanding anything seems to me utterly remarkable, um, but with great respect to what actually the theologies are really saying. And, uh, and your first port of call here would, of course, be Dante, all right? And so we go on. And this is part of the problem. We've, we've ended up in a, not an artificial situation, but we've, and I'm not a, I'm not a sociologist, thank goodness. I'm only here. Uh, but w one where really, again, people are successfully talking past each other, and the emphasis will continue that way until the, the people who believe very strongly in terms of their religious belief uh, Again, in a way, also spend a bit of time talking to philosophers it, it, because it's all a question of you know how we know anything. So you're saying the problem is not so much that some of these religious people don't understand science; it's they don't understand religion. I, I would put it as politely as that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ian. Well, I, I think it's really incumbent on 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 scientists to to make people aware of the limitations of what science tries to do. You know, and if you cast science as something that is concerned with the material world and material experience and uh, is utterly persuasive uh, within that realm, but does not really or should not try to, to go further and uh, pretend to be an explanation of everything, I think there's plenty of ground, uh, of, of, of common ground in the middle. I don't think, if you, if you uh, have somebody who's absolutely convinced that Adam and Eve disported themselves in the Garden of Eden, there's very little um, uh, common ground on, on, on which to argue, and it's basically hardly worth uh, your time getting involved in that. But I think most people of goodwill um, would, uh, would understand that there is we have, we have the, the, the possibility to, to understand the material, and we have the possibility to imagine the immaterial. And those two things are both part of our, our experience. They both need to be dealt with at some level, and scientists are only dealing with one part. But I don't think it's that easy to separate it out, though. I mean, we have this problem oh, no, no. with... Uh... I, I mean, I, I, I agree, but at the same time, there's this sort of problem in that science and religion sort of have this duplication of function problem, right? Like fundamentally, and this is, you know, we're talking about a very Western specific sort of even like American evangelical sort of specific context, but, um, you know, religion is something that's common across all human societies. Like I'm not religious myself, but I respect different religions because I'm an anthropologist. I respect other people's cultures and religion is a very fundamental part of these cultures. but the goal, underlying function of religion is to explain why things are the way they are, which is also the underlying function of science. And I think that it's hard to, it, it's hard to carve out little fiefdoms and say, yeah. well, you, you, you explain this, but we're only going to explain this. I mean, but yeah. that's why this, this <laughs> conflict keeps coming up, because that's then true. you say that to somebody, and they say, but, but, but I learned that, but I learned this. Um, so... But there is a distinction between the how and the why. And I think that it's in making that distinction that at least you can open the uh, door. But, but on the other hand, places, I mean, so yeah. tr traditionally, I mean, there's this, you know, Stephen Jay Gould famously mm. tried to make this distinction between, you know, religion dealing with values, mm -hmm. science dealing with mm -hmm. the observable world. But religion also, also makes a lot of claims <laughs> on what is real, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes, it well, yeah, well, yeah, human me, beings yeah. reconstruct the world in their own heads, and they have a great deal of difficulty in separating out, you know, what is actually uh, their experience of the material world, you know, and what is the reconstructed in the, about the world in their heads. And I think so. There really is. I'm a bit this more gray area. A little bit more optimistic, oddly enough. 
uh, I, I, again, it's a, putting it simply. I, I put it simply because I can, un so I can understand it. Don't worry about anything else. Uh, but it's a, really a question of what levels of explanation you want. Um, and I, I, I think, in a way, Gould's magisteria was an attempt to do that. But again, he was treating them simply as equals. A and again, because we tend to see things in this rather binary way, mm -hmm. as as again adversaries, and because some people get very, very agitated. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, it's very difficult to have any sort of <laughs> intelligent conversation about this. But uh, if, if one looks at some of the mystical traditions, uh, Sufi is one which comes to mind. Um, then one says, well, whatever these people think they're doing, um, they somehow have an aspect of their life which is entirely unintelligible to science. Well, hormones perhaps. Um, but on the other hand pervades their actions with this sense of intense meaning. It's not a very helpful thing to say because you know they're not they're going to carry that through into the test tubes and the like. But it, again it's just trying to hint that you know the complexity of our existence is one which is not reduced to these very simple black and white discussions. And of course in a materially extremely prosperous society where you generally depend on switches and computers, you will end up with a binary way of thinking. 